All right, so Jacob, what is water desalination? Basically, water desalination is uh, there's various processes that can, can be used. So it's a process by where fresh water and salts are separated so that you can drink the fresh water. There's thermal processes where you, they basically boil off the water and you use the condensate, and that is your clean water. That's actually the most widely used method, but it's mostly around the Middle East, um, energy rich countries which can afford it. Um, but in countries like South Africa, it's mostly reverse osmosis, which is a membrane process and it basically filters your salt water from your fresh water, it separates it, um, so you sit with a fresh water stream and with a brine stream. Everybody is aware of seawater desalination, but actually the most desalinations in South Africa is actually inland, Borals, Karoo area, Johannesburg, Sassel, Iskor, the big industries, they all use desalination processes for various reasons in, in their factories. Yeah. And with regards to the plant itself, I mean, how do they turn seawater into drinkable water? So the heart of a, let's talk about a seawater desalination plant, um, is the reverse osmosis membrane. So it's a standard membrane. Um, there's big manufacturers that produce them. And basically under high pressure, you filter the clean water from the salt water. Um, and that's a fairly easy and simple process. But then to make the process work, you need to take the seawater, you need to clean it first to take it through the membrane. So depending on the quality of the seawater, you might need extensive technologies and pretreatment. Um, if you're lucky and you have very clean waters, um, then you don't need it. And then also from such a reverse osmosis process, the water is very clean. Um, so it's not good for your health, you, you can't drink it directly. So you need to add minerals back into that after you've uh, desalinated them. So it's quite a technical process. I mean, in terms of how much water you're extracting from a desalination plant versus the dams, how do they compare? Look, theoretically, you can produce Use all water from, from seawater, um, it's just uh, financially it's, it's not, not viable. So one would typically look at the base load that the desalination provides as a backup um, and to preserve some of your other water sources and that to provide all of the water needs. Let's then zone in on the Western Cape. I mean, they're talking about a two to three year process in order to recover from the droughts that they've had uh, thus far. Is desalination a viable solution to, to that drought? Look, uh, City of Cape Town, they've got a clear roadmap of, of what they're pursuing and, and, and they publish that. So they're looking at aquifer um, extraction, they're looking at uh, municipal reuse, um, they're looking at pump schemes from the Burke River. And part of that long-term plan is definitely uh, desalination as well. Now listen, all South Africans are going to want to ask you one question. What about the moolah? I mean, how much is it going to cost to produce this amount of water on a mass scale? One, one needs to be careful with comp comparing the cost. There's a lot of figures around in the media and, and one really needs to look what is included in that cost. You know, the one guy would say, no, it's very inexpensive, you know, but maybe it only looks at the desalination process and doesn't take to, into account from the sea all the way to the tap. Um, so current figures that, that we see is basically to operate, provide the energy, maintenance, chemicals, everything for a fairly large desalination plant. You probably talk around eight rand per cubic meter, but then there's still capital financing. The plant needs to be paid off and amortized um, over time, and that will probably add another eight rand as well. Um, so you probably look at the 16 rand total price, including ev everything, including financing. But then obviously there's still cost on the municipal side for conveyance and get it to your to your tap. So let me play devil's advocate for a second here. Yeah? The Western Cape government has asked everybody to reduce their water consumption overall, but it sounds to me like there are lots of solutions to the problem thus far. So should we still try and consume less water? What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I think my personal feel is that you need to try to, to, to save water. Um, I mean, there's bigger and bigger pressures on the environment. People are getting more. Um, so we definitely, for me personally, um, with the droughts, I've halved my consumption at my house just by implementing basic principles. But it, uh, it only occurred once the pressure was there. So I think we should definitely continue that drive. So from that salty taste you get in your mouth from diving in the waves to drinking beautifully clean water out of your taps, I mean how do you get that water from the salty sea to, to my tap? There's two methods. One is basically to drill a borehole on the beach and you extract um, uh, seawater through a bottle, so it's already filtered. Um, so the water is fairly clean and it's a less expensive treatment process in a less expensive plant. But that's more for your smaller type of plants, your Plettenberg Bay, Nysna type plants that we've installed. But as soon as you get to bigger plants like the Marshall Bay plant, then it's not feasible anymore to use borals and then you start to look at open seawater intakes. So the moment you have open seawater intakes, there can be algae, red tides, other organisms coming from the ocean and then you need a more extensive treatment process. So typically your first step to, to have some kind of screening or drum filtration to remove your bigger and, and coarse particles. 
And then you will have some form of a filtration process, either sand filtration or membrane filtration. And then after that, you will go to your desalination process, your membranes where you will do the desalination. And then after that, you will do your remineralization to add in the good minerals. And then you will do your final chlorine uh, disinfection. So what does it then take to run one of these plants? I think the actual expertise in South Africa, we're lucky. We've, we're a fairly industrialized country, so I think the basic principles is, is the same. So to do the operation of maintenance afterwards, I think we've got enough expertise in South Africa. I think where the specific expertise come in is to do the upfront engineering selection of the correct site, the correct technology and the correct size of the plant um, for that specific town or city. And I think that, that's probably where the expertise uh, will come in. But what it typically would involve, once the plant has been constructed, uh, we can take the module by plant as an example. It's a 15 megalitre per day plant. Um, and there you will probably have 10 to 15 people that operate the plant. One of my first questions about desalination is the impact on the environment. Are we not just now depleting another resource on our planet? Look, I think South Africa has got very good systems and, 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 and legislation in place. So I can't just go and build a desalination plant. There needs to be a proper environmental impact assessment that's conducted by a professional uh, body. And we've taken part in some of those and um, it's a good process where everything is considered and, and the biggest impact is the brine return to the ocean. So it will look at the specific place, you know, so they will not discharge the brine into the coastal area where there will be a lot of damage. They will typically take it in deeper where there's a lot of dilution effect in a fairly small area um, to minimize the impact. Excuse my pun, but it sounds to me like this could become quite a fishy process. Do you guys end up extracting a whole bunch of sea creatures? Yeah, look, if it's open water extraction, for example, if you take the Marshall Bay one, it's a couple of hundreds meter offshore that you extract it, so it's not right in that active marine zone that you extract it. So the plant will be designed and the intake will be positioned in such a manner that minimal impact is caused to the environment and the fish, um, and screening systems will be put in place to prevent fish um, from being sucked into the plant. So it seems that water desalination could contribute to water conservation in the Western Cape, but it's going to come at a huge cost. It's still up to each and every resident in the Western Cape to use water responsibly.